Welcome to the sixth section of the Mastering TypeScript Programming Techniques course, Functional Programming. In this section, we'll learn about functional programming, see how to use Ram.js in TypeScript, and finally see how to manipulate arrays and objects using Ram.js as well. We'll see how to work with functional programming in TypeScript, and we'll see some basic terms around functional programming, and also check an example of this approach using TypeScript. Functional programming is a paradigm that has recently got a lot of attention from JavaScript and TypeScript developers. And there are some keywords that we need to be aware of before we take a look at any examples. So functional programming uses pure functions as it tries to avoid mutable data and share state and, they, and it also uses high order functions. Now let's discuss these terms a bit more in detail, starting with pure functions. Pure functions are functions that, given the same input, always return the same output and they have no side effects, which means that they can't manipulate anything else inside your application. High order functions are functions that take functions as a parameter, return a function, or they do both. And then finally, mutable and shared data. So especially when discussing these terms in the context of object-oriented programming, these terms mean that objects are shared between scopes. Functional programming relies on immutable data structures to create and derive new data from existing data, and the state is never shared. Immutable structure means that it can't be modified once it has been created. So it's time to dive in and have a look at a few examples. First, we're going to take a look at a very simple, pure function. So this is an example of a pure function because given the same two numbers as an input, the function will always return the same output. So no matter what we do, if we pass in two and three as the arguments, we will always get six as the answer. Remember, pure functions will always produce the same output given the same inputs. Let's also take a look at a high order function. In this case, we need a function that takes a function as a parameter, return a function, or both. The easiest high order functions that we can take a look at are map, filter, and reduce. And I'm sure you have already used one of these before. So in order to have a look at such a function, I'm going to bring in some example data structure. I have a list of people here, and I have an array of objects where each person has a name property and an age property. So let's take a look at a high order function, and the first one is going to be map. So using this one line of code, we are using the map method to iterate through the people array and we extract the name property for each person. And if we run this example, as you can see, we get the names returned. So this is an example of a high order function because map accepts a function which is an arrow function in this case and that makes it a high order function. We can take a look at another example by adding filter into the mix as well.
So in this example, we are creating a new array called pensioner and we iterate through our people array. First, we filter out the people who are older than 65 and then we map those and extract their names. So here we're actually using two high order functions. One is filter and this is the function that it accepts as a parameter and then map uses another function as well. So it, it's another high order function. And running this example will return the two names of the people who are older than 65. Now the other important thing to remember regarding functional programming is that once you assign a value to a variable, that value should never change. In functional programming, you always copy the value of your variable and you modify the copy and not the original value. So let's take a look at an example of how you can achieve this. So here we have a data object with name and age properties. And normally the way you would update the name would be something similar to data.name equals to a new value. And then print out the data. And this is perfectly valid, except functional programming exactly wants you to avoid this. So instead of overwriting something in our data object, we want to make sure that we create a new copy of that and then we assign the name property in there. So in light of this, instead of updating the name in this way, we're going to create a new variable and we're just going to copy the values from the original data object by using object.assign. So we're going to assign data, our object, to a new object. And as a third argument, we can pass in some values as well. And therefore, we can overwrite the name property using object.assign in our data object. And if we look out our new data, we will get the updated name available for us. Please bear in mind that in order to get object.assign functioning, you need to make sure that you are targeting ES6 version of JavaScript, either when running TS node or when running the TSC, the TypeScript compiler.